I've got another one for you. Already? There's no limit to these. You must know that by now. No, I'm good for that. I'm, I'm glad there's no limit. I like them. Okay. So this one is, we, we've heard this. People have talked about it and thought about it. What happens when you jump in an airplane? Uh, well, hopefully you're going somewhere. I, I don't know. What do you mean? What happens when you jump in an Your airplane? Your plane is flying, you know. Oh, you mean what happens when you literally jump in an yes. airplane? I thought you mean like, yeah, jump in an airplane. I'm going here, you know. Oh, jump onto an airplane. No, you're yeah. in the airplane, in the aisle, and then you jump. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You go up and down. Some people think that the airplane's going 500 miles an hour. Right. If you jump... You end up pinned against the back wall. They watch too many Warner Brothers cartoons. <laughs> That's what's wrong with those people. Too okay, many so Wiley they're using Coyote. the cartoon laws of physics That's instead right. of the actual yeah. laws of physics. Yeah, in that person's world, you know what else happens? Um, if you don't know that you're not standing on the edge of a cliff, you can actually stand on thin Gravity air. Gravity only kicks in with your awareness. Where that's it, you know. And it's a new uh, law of physics, right there. Right. Plus, if you're hitting the head with a frying pan, your face takes the shape of the frying, of the frying pan. pan. <laughs> that's right. You just become two big eyes with a round face. That's right. Yes. Cartoon <laughs> laws of physics. Cartoon laws of physics. So, what I my answer here might be obvious, but I know there are people out there who wondered whether the plane would just sort of escape from under your feet for how fast it's moving, right. okay? So this is a very basic sort of first week of physics that you learn this and you see demonstrations of it, but I will now tell you, okay? okay? When the plane takes off and it is cruising at some constant speed, mm -hmm. pick any speed. 563 make, miles per hour. Fine, if it's constant, the plane is moving 563 miles an hour, and so are you. And so is the air inside the plane. Ooh, this is cool. So is the fly that happened to fly into the plane before they closed the door. Right. You, the air, the fly are moving 563 miles per hour. If you're all moving at the same speed together, then you don't know how fast you're moving. Yeah, you're not moving at all. You're not basically in the moving reference frame of the plane, you're not moving at all. Yeah. Correct. So if you jump up, you will land right back where you started. Right. It's that simple. Let me get a round number. Let's say you're going 600 miles an hour. Okay. So 600 miles an hour is 10 miles per minute. Right. That's a mile every six seconds. Right. Okay. And in New York City, there's 20 blocks per mile. So that's by like three blocks per second. Okay. Oh, man. Can, can we find that transportation system? <laughs> three blocks per second. So I can get around Manhattan the way I'd like to. Man, that'd be fantastic. Yeah. That would be a flying car. Maybe you would do that. Okay. So now watch. So if you jump up and in the plane that's going 600 miles an hour, and you stay airborne for one second. Right. And then you land where you started. You also move forward three blocks. Three blocks. So if someone is outside of the plane and watched you, you would jump up and you would follow this arc. Right. A parabolic arc. In my reference frame, because I'm outside of the plane, I see you jump and land and there's a beautiful parabolic arc that you took. Right. You also get a gold medal when you land. <laughs> the long jump. <laughs> <laughs> so another way to do this is, and we, you, we do this in physics class, if you have a train, like a model train, right. this is a great physics demo, and the, the smokestack of the train has a little uh, spring, you can put a ping pong ball in it, just a, a, a tiny ball. There it is. As the train is moving, the spring can pop the golf ball straight up. Okay. And then where does the golf ball land? Does the train leave it behind? No, because the golf ball had the same forward motion as the train did. All the train did was give it upwards motion, like you jumping in the airplane. Right. Then it fell back down, so it'll shoot it up, and it'll fall back down and land exactly back in the nozzle. Mm -hmm. And you will see it take that arc and land where it had taken off. And that is the train and golf ball version of you jumping inside of an airplane. As far as you're concerned, you're landing in the same spot. But as far as I'm concerned, you're not. 
Right. You're three right. blocks farther down the, down the road. Cool. So it's, it's, it has to do with your reference frame. And it's a remarkable thing. If, if the vessel is big enough so you don't feel jiggles, you don't know how fast the thing is going. We're on Earth. Earth is going eight, uh, 18 miles per second around the sun. Wow. Okay? Now, you, if you want to land in a different place, do that while the plane is accelerating. Right. Okay, okay now the, the flight attendants won't let you do this, but yeah. uh, right when the plane touches Such down. Such killjoys they are. God, <laughs> I'm just trying to do a physics experiment here. Exactly. <laughs> What do you mean? I got to sit down and b- pass in my seatbelt and put my and why is what is it with the seat in the upright position? The seat only goes back two and a half inches. <laughs> please, please put your seat up, sir, sir. Please put your seat up. It's like, what, what? Oh, sorry. Let me put my seat up. Okay, there you go. Yeah, because now you'll survive the crash, right, whereas exactly. before you wouldn't have. Right. Oh, thank you for saving my life with this two and a half inch differential. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so. Actually, I think I know why they do that. I think really? I know why. why? Yeah? Why? You, want, you want to know why? I would like to know. Okay. To be that when all the seats are aligned, if you're climbing to get out in a wreckage, then you don't have to navigate differently oriented seats. That makes sense. Yeah. That yeah. makes sense. I'm pretty sure that's how that, okay. how that rolls. All right. Okay. So if you magically got permission to do a physics experiment the moment the wheels touched, Okay, because what happens the moment the wheels touch on a run on a runway? They put the engines into reverse thrust. Okay, and so now the engine exhaust reverses and is pointing forward instead of backwards. And if they if necessary, they'll also apply their brakes. So it might be landing at two hundred miles an hour, and it's ultimately zero. Okay, okay. Right. If you jump while that's happening, you will not land in the same spot. Because when you jumped, the plane was going 200 miles an hour. But when you landed, the plane was going 180 miles an hour. You jump again. And so you have a faster speed going forward than the plane does because the plane is slowing slowing down. down. So you could just jump up and down while the plane is on the runway and ultimately end up in the cockpit. Nice. Well. Just just by jumping straight up and down. Yeah, but the door will be locked because, you know, security reasons. Yeah, they'll shoot you if you... <laughs> yeah, it's good to say. You won't quite and make it. So consider that's why they're animate about your seatbelt on takeoff and landing, but not when you're cruising. Because the acceleration and the deceleration is what changes your relationship to the fuselage if you jump up and fo- and come back down again. Right. Okay. So, yeah, that's why they can go 500 miles an hour. You may now remove your seatbelts and walk around the cabin, but it's just pulling in to the to the to the gate. Right. It's going 5 miles an hour, but then it's going zero. Okay? So, that's right. enough to knock you over. Look at that. So, that that's all I got to say about jumping up and down in a damn airplane. That's cool. Well, I mean, I, now, when uh, you hear that I have been arrested. <laughs> Tell them it's a science. You're doing it's it for a, science. I'm just letting everybody know that this was a science experience. I did it for science, people. We'll, take a, we'll get a GoFundMe to, to, to get you out get of jail. Get my bail. That's right. Get my bail money up, people. Because <laughs> we, we know what we have to do now. <laughs> so another fun thing I used to do. Uh, I'm too old and tired and and crickety for this. But when I was a kid, um, in an elevator, because I grew up in the city, so half my life is in elevators. Um, If the elevator is going up and it's about to stop, you jump just at that instant. Right. Okay? When you do, you had the upward motion that the elevator had just before it stopped. Mm. So then when you... Come back down, you fall a bigger distance than you otherwise would have, and it feels it feels great. It feels like like you go over a hill, you know, in a car, yeah, yeah, yeah. or on a roller coaster. Roller coaster, yeah, yeah. If you do it in the opposite direction, then the elevator's closer to you than your body thought it would have been, and you end up getting little, compressed. Little pancaking. Little pancaking, right, yeah. right. But it's fun to do that where you you are in mo- you're in air while the thing you were attached to changes its. Speed. It's very cool. 
Yeah. I yeah. like it. I like yeah. it. So, so there you go. In case anybody comes up to you and wonders what's going on. Yeah. Why, why are you jumping up and down in a plane? <laughs> so now we know why. This is, this is it. Because they listened to this episode. Two, two reasons you were jumping up and down. One, clearly you are drunk. Two, you listen to Star Talk. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck, that's all I got for you on that one. Okay. All right. All right. As always, I bid you to keep looking up. 